It's DTS 96, and I read the full Activision's Blizzard earning report. It's an expansion this fall, not just an update. You're listening to Destiny The Show. What's up, everybody? My name is BBK Dragoon, and welcome to Destiny The Show, number 96. A lot to talk about this week. My awesome co-host, Diddy, is here. Diddy, how was your week? What's our Discord update? I played with, like, three or four big groups this week. Had a great time. But the community's getting pretty big, right? Yeah, we have over 300 registered members on the uh, the Destiny Discord, Destiny the Show Discord, yeah. and it's awesome. Uh, Discord's pushing out updates fairly regularly, so it allows me to redefine roles and permissions a lot better and easier, so really excited about that. So thank you for all the growth we've had mm-hmm. in the last couple of weeks. It, had, it was like under 200 last week, so that's a huge jump in just a week, so thank you guys so much. My week was pretty tiring i would say one day this week i had to um be on a client site for an outage to reconfigure their server room which was phase one of many and i was there from like 10 p.m to 2 a.m so that was not exciting was it hot in the server room no surprisingly not okay we usually like to keep those pretty cool our server room where i work is it's nasty. I'm glad I don't have to spend much time in there. Now, in gaming this week, I know you played a little bit of Destiny, but you and I have also been playing the Overwatch closed beta. I don't want to take too much time, but just comment on it and your thoughts and experiences. I love Overwatch. It's it's a lot of fun. It's all I wanted in a class-based shooter. I can feel a need for certain roles as we're playing through the game, and being able to switch that hero that you need is, is pretty nice. Um, I also think that the gameplay is very smooth, very smooth, very, very colorful, looks great, feels great, and it's just a ton of fun. By the way, we're both playing on PC. I want to mm-hmm. make that a little elitism note here because I just don't know how that game plays on console. They have a separate team balancing the console version altogether, so the actual, like, the champ balance will be independent on console than it is of PC just because... The gameplay is so dramatically different between the two platforms. Yeah, I mean, mouse and keyboard for me, it's the first shooter I've really sunk my teeth into. I mean, I played Killing Floor for for a while there, but that's not really a comparison because it's just shooting zombies. But Overwatch, man, mouse and keyboard is so hard. I'm so used to having that auto-aim, I can definitely feel the difference. My very first online shooter, dude, ever was a Rainbow Six game on PC a long time ago, like very quickly followed up by Unreal Tournament 2003. So that was before I'd even played Halo on Xbox. Uh, keyboard mouse forever with shooters, man. Like <laughs> love Counter-Strike Go, just don't have the time to play it. In terms of Overwatch, I got to play in one of the beta weekends back last November, played it to death, got to play in one of the beta weekends this spring, and now we're playing in the closed slash now open beta. I really like the game. I think it's spectacularly well-crafted and tuned. I have a few reservations, my little quips and complaints. I hate May. I hate the balance of May right now. <laughs> She's exceptional if you know how to play her. Not only does she have beautiful CCs and can lock you up, but she can kill you quite easily as well. And then Hanzo's alt. You've heard me, Diddy, complain about Hanzo's alt probably every single game that you and I have played together in. He just looks at the enemy, presses Q, and then shoots the giant dragons that just kill you, <laughs> goes through walls. I hate that skillless alt, man. Oh, but you have to aim it. You have to aim it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm actually a void walker here sitting going, uh-oh. That's kind of hypocritical. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I like the game a lot. Don't play the game solo. You need to have teammates. Everyone who's posting these brilliant clips like, I topped fragged, and you see their levels like seven, and they're all playing below level 10 people. Just keep going, guys. Wait till you start matching full teams of 40s and 50s, because 
Overwatch is so brutal to solo players. You will begin matching full squads. It does not have, at least in the betas that I played in, did not have big party matchmaking restrictions. So if you're a solo player, you could easily match big teams of six. And, yeah, the fact oh. that it's a class-based shooter makes it that much harder to solo carry. You can DPS all day long, but if the enemy team has tanks, healers, and DPS, it's, they're just going to shut you down because you don't have a lot of health. And you're not going to be killing the tank fast enough for him for uh, to avoid all of his uh, crowd control and disruption. So, it's uh it's fun. It actually kind of made me think of how class based shooters like that would work in Destiny, mm -hmm. because we talked about adding healers and tanks. Yeah. In PvP, Destiny, yeah, that would get annoying real fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just like, man, this sniper rifle it doesn't work like it used to because that mm -hmm. dude has 800 health. <laughs> and my sniper only does 300 damage. To Blizzard's credit, I think they've done a spectacular job making what will be a great game that's well supported because it's a Blizzard title. Shoutouts to all the people I ran PvP with this week during Destiny of the Show or using the Destiny of the Show Discord. It was a lot of you, but I had a great time. Going to continue doing that. So just keep your eye on the LFG chats. Um, it's pretty sweet to see over 300 people. All right, let's get into the news. We got weekly update. We've got like confirmed fall expansion, not just an update, and lots of more interesting stuff coming from the Activision's Blizzard quarter one earnings call. News. First up on the docket is the Twab Twippity Twab. twab. I made fun of this in the Destiny the Show Discord, and I'm going to make fun of it here. Hey, guys. What's up? Deej here. Remember that hot fix we talked about last week? We turned it on. <laughs> now we'll see you next week. Adios. That's it. They turned the melee patch on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's all that really happened this week in Destiny. Nothing new. Iron Banner wasn't... I would have liked to see some Iron Banner stats, you know, since it was the first Iron Banner on the new update. Yeah. I, I should rephrase by the time you're listening to this they have turned the melee patch on if it's may 10th or past that's when it, the light switch has been flipped they did talk a little bit about three streams that we're getting throughout may first being may 11th and that is the artists of destiny what's that one gonna look like years of hard work can follow a moment of inspiration relive the panel discussion we hosted at emerald city comic-con with the artist who created the original concepts that shaped the development of worlds characters and weapons in destiny so when it says relive this panel i'm wondering if this is going to be a vod like if they filmed the emerald city comic con and we're going to get to see that discussion <laughs> if they're just playing that vod instead of actually having a new panel to re rehash what they talked about in that emerald city comic con i'd still love be, to uh, see it i mean yeah I, me too i regardless it's going to be very interesting to see especially the original concepts of destiny i'd like to see what could have been you know yeah because we're still frothing at the mouth of like oh my gosh where is this game going so any hints of the past like about well we thought we could do this and maybe we will in the future i mean we learned about the queen from one of these streams so or at least our future the following week may 18th right along for king's fall what's that one watch us confront our own demons bungie devs will face oryx in his final form a designer and a storyteller will provide expert commentary from the safety of a couch on the encounters and the lore that define the pinnacle experience in The Taken King. Hype. This one, actually, like we were being a little bit sarcastic in the pre-show, but this one I'm actually looking forward to. Yeah, if it's going to be Bungie devs playing the raid, this is not going to be an hour-long stream. I think it's going to be a little bit longer than that, especially if it's considered a ride-along or if it's going to be a... A dev environment in which they're not really fighting the bosses all the way through and they're just flying through the uh, environments. Oh man, wouldn't that be so cool? I just want to hear the thought process from the raid team. I want to hear more of the design ideas and hopefully Luke Smith makes an appearance there and it's like, you know, talks a little bit about the basketball room. <laughs> just some more insight into that side of Destiny, dude. The next week is a ride along in the Crucible, Wednesday, May 25th. Why are they doing a Crucible one, Diddy? We've led architectural tours on every world in Destiny, but why no love for the competitive arenas? At long last, we'll fire up a dev kit and fly through some of your favorite maps with the people who built them. <gasps> Anticipate pro tips and notes on creative process. So this is a dev kit. This is 
Yeah, this is forge mode, basically. They're it's gonna fly flying. around in forge oh, mode. Oh man, <laughs> dude. Oh, okay, yeah. Now I'm excited. I was being real sarcastic about this earlier, but you called, you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> so why wouldn't they the week before do like some flybys? Maybe show some of the scripting tools. I don't know. Hype. That's actually really cool. And when they say getting pro tips, what do you bet they fly out? Some folks, the MTash, the True Vanguards. Yeah. You know, whoever Most else likely. fits into that. So. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's the next three weeks. We're getting some content from Bunjo, Bungo, Brico. That's it for the weekly update, I believe. Speaking of which, is this the time that we should talk about our uh, DTS bounty to find out our Challenge of Elders champions? Absolutely. Who did okay. it? So, two weeks ago, we extended the challenge for the DTS bounty. It is no longer active. It's been completed. The bounty was submit your highest Challenge of Elders score and along with it, a screenshot of the score screen, as well as a link to the activity on destinytracker.com. The two folks that we had do that was at NPRX, and his squad had a score of 45,925 in the Challenge of Elders this last week, and Indio Techno with a high score of 48,165. So, congratulations, Indio Techno. Nice. We will be following up with a direct message to find out if you're on Xbox or PlayStation 4, and we'll be sending over your $5 code uh, fairly soon. So thanks to those that participated. We'll be thinking about other ways that we can get people involved, because I kind of expected more folks would submit, other than just, I think, two or three that we had. Mm-hmm. So we'll figure out a different contest, or if you guys have suggestions for DTS bounties, fire them our way at Dusty the Show on Twitter. Is that it for the TWAB, dude? Yeah, I'd say so. They did have a Crota like speed run in there at the end, didn't they? Yeah, it's interesting that that made an honorable mention for movie of the week. It is a solo speed run, and it only took eight minutes and four seconds on a Titan. But mm-hmm. I mean, okay, okay, you know. <laughs> we now have the Activision's Blizzard investor earning call that happens every single quarter this is where they go over the numbers they talk with the investors since activision blizzard is a publicly traded company all those investors want to know what's coming up and how are they going to make more money this is a 12 page transcript that'll be linked in the show notes this was the most interesting thing i have read in a long time regarding gaming diddy i went through all 12 pages (laughs) and i highly encourage Anybody who has interest in finance or gaming and just like the money side of it, like the business insight stuff, it's worth reading because it's a little bit terrifying to me how many fingers in the pie Activision Blizzard has. Their whole slew of IPs from Call of Duty to Destiny to now owning King, the Candy Crush people, and you've got the Warcraft movie coming out, you've got Overwatch coming out, they have their, oh, and MLG, they own MLG, and they're talking about some of the esports numbers that they're getting. It's just ridiculous. It's huge. It's so huge. It's so big business, dude. And it's an industry that their decisions regarding the games, the player engagement, all, at the end of the day, reflect on the investor's earnings. Okay, long story short, The reason we're going to talk about it is because there was Destiny information included. They basically go through all of the different games and they touch on, well, we've got great stuff going on in Hearthstone. We've got 50 million Hearthstone players, which is pretty crazy because there were 40 million Hearthstone players in November. Uh, For Destiny, I'm going to quote here from Eric Hirschberg. Uh, I believe it was Eric Hirschberg, actually. Hold on. Let me back and see if it was him. Thomas Tipple, the chief operating officer. Okay, there we go. Let's see. In regards to Destiny, the game now has nearly 30 million registered players who have averaged over 100 hours of game time each. End quote. Diddy. What? What? That's a lot of people. And that's a lot of game time. <laughs> the average game time of a single Destiny player is over 100 hours? That's pretty decent. I would say so. Yeah. I, I know some people who are tipping the scales in a just huge in like the 70 80 day playtime like position which is fine i'm just that's pretty crazy to me game's not even two years old yet Um, i'm resuming the quote here in april bungie released an update to the game which was well received by players and drove strong re-engagement we also successfully introduced a new loot box feature which had a double digit attach rate later this year Activision and Bungie plan to launch a large new expansion for the Destiny universe, which you will hear more about 
in the coming months, end quote. E3, you're going to hear about this expansion. It's not just an update. Boom, expansion, Diddy. New content. He specifically said new <laughs> he content. He didn't say challenges, did he? <laughs> he didn't say, oh, yeah, we're going to update some older things. Yeah. No, this is a new <laughs> update, new content, Taken King style. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I want to add here, too, that uh, Bungie has released over 40 updates since the launch of this game in an effort to continually improve the game, which has helped attract new players and keeps them coming back, end quote. 40 updates since the initial launch. That's pretty hot. You and I were talking about when Halo 3 got that one title update back in the day. Yep, exactly. And Reach got that one title update as well. And it's, it was 343's title update. It's a totally new era we live in. It's hot fixes and patches and updates. It's a consistent flow that f makes the environment a little bit more fluid. I don't think you'll ever see the extinction of games that are just like, let's say Dark Souls. You buy Dark Souls, you play through the campaign, and that's the campaign. Like it's, I love Dark Souls 1 and 2, some of my favorite games of all time. And yeah, there's multiplayer features, but it's not like Dark Souls is receiving a never-ending content stream the way a World of Warcraft or a Destiny does. So many games now are just changing to where it's a continuous flow of content towards the player to keep them engaged. Engagement is the main set of numbers that they use all throughout this earnings bit. Uh, they mentioned the loot box feature. That's sterling treasure, and it had double-digit attach rates. So that means at minimum 10,000 sterling treasure units were sold. Minimum. That's a lot in a month. It is, yeah. It's only a month later, and that's obviously the initial... The bulk of the purchases is going to be right as it drops, but that's a pretty big number. During the questions and answers portion of the investor call, a dude asked about Destiny and the April update, and he asked, I just wonder if you could maybe kind of size the engagement, how it's trending relative to the peak you hit back in September around the Taken King launch. And this guy's asking the question, basically, what does the engagement in Destiny look like now compared to when you guys hit your peak with the Taken King launch? They keep using engagement because they'll never throw out the actual like population numbers. It's really just, yeah, I've got good player engagement. That's our in-house <laughs> metric for saying we're not going to share that. Eric Hirschberg, um, chief executive officer at Activision, replies with, Hey, Doug, it's Eric. So Destiny has nearly 30 million registered players now, and our April content successfully re-engaged the community and was very well received. We think engagement has remained remarkably strong even after the release of some competitive games in this genre. But it's clear that our fans are hungry for more content than we have been able to create. And that passion and loyalty from our fans is something that we don't take for granted. Which is why we're working side by side with Bungie to make sure that in the future we're able to deliver a more consistent stream of great content and drive even more engagement. End quote. TLDR. Content drought is noticed. We're working with Bungie, so we're throwing more money at Bungie or an additional studio to help them create content for more consistent stream of revenue into our Activision wallets. Yes. That's my personal paraphrase, by the way. That's not official. Yeah, it's basically saying the lack of content between Taken King and the April update is unacceptable. So and they Activision know. They know. is saying, Bungie, the live team, not enough. It's not cutting it. Year two is not cutting it. And they understand that players want more stuff. They understand very clearly that we would be ready to throw money at our screens for more raids <laughs> and more expansions, which... I can't blame him. It's true. Yes, I would throw more money at the screen. But Activision, please don't milk us too hard. Don't take yeah, all I my mean, money. Part of me really agrees with Activision's stance on this. Yes, I would love more content. But the other part of me is thinking, remember that time a while back we got that report of it takes eight hours to move one resource node in Destiny because yep. of their technology. It just It's yeah. just old or slow. Mm -hmm. Yep. If, if Activision is not pushing Bungie into a more technologically advanced game to develop a game for next generation consoles and for the next generation gamer is, or excuse me, current gen, 
that's it's not improving their situation. Activision can say, Bungie, you need to do it faster all day long, but if they don't have the resources to make that, develop that game quicker, then it's just not going to happen. It's like you're sitting in traffic on a highway and Activision Blizzard's just like, nope, we just got to make this traffic go faster. Let's add some more cars. That's yeah. not how you do it. You add more lanes to the highway. That's how you free up that space. Well, we already know that, is it High Moon, the name of the studio that they've been using to develop additional stuff? I believe so. Okay. That is what I read from this comment. And yes, if their tools are outdated, throw the resources at them to make it better. It, it's a money-generating tool for them, and they've seen the success of in-game purchases. And I think when I read the full financial report, you see so many numbers that across the board in all of their games, the in-game transactions are doing well and growing across every IP that they mm -hmm. have. I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to find a single game in this... I don't think there is a single game that they talk about here between Overwatch, WoW, Diablo, Candy Crush, you've got Call of Duty, Destiny. They all have in-game transactions across the board. That's not going away anymore. Like, it's no, getting it's bigger and bigger. I also want to bring up the fact that they bought um, Candy Crush for like $6 billion. It was like $5.8 <laughs> billion back uh, in November. And they talk a lot about that in <clears throat> the earnings report about using that new company king the folks who own candy crush to create mobile games using the activision blizzard ips so it is not far-fetched to expect some kind of destiny mobile game or some kind of hearth not hearthstone probably not but like a wow mobile game or some called mo mobile i'm having trouble talking here uh, some of the numbers that are insane at the start of the call they say that they have 544 million monthly active players across all of their games 463 of those are from king the candy crush people those numbers are ridiculous it's insane i would love to play and i'm, I'm okay with this idea i would love to play a destiny card game like hearthstone style on mobile developed by king or whatever that would be hilariously awesome. I would never get any work done. <laughs> <laughs> you, you play Kate 6? Oh, wait, no. I would get work done because I have a Windows phone and it wouldn't be available on the <laughs> Windows phone platform. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> oh, man. They talk about the potential of cross-game advertising. So using their 463 million active Candy Crush players and advertising in the app for Overwatch or Call of Duty or whatever it is that they want to do. Overwatch 2, they de they're developing and talking about how it's primed and ready for franchise products, for TV shows, movies, uh, lunchboxes, toys, all that stuff. When you look at Overwatch and the characters, you're like, dude, Overwatch is primed and ready for a TV show or an actual movie. You know, did he? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that would be awesome. And the same thing should happen with Destiny. I would love to see Destiny TV shows or little mini series like they do for Overwatch. You know, that's maybe not going to happen anytime soon, but... Overwatch, it's got that recipe. It's nice. All right, so let's wrap us up. I will leave this on destinytheshow.com, a link to this. You should read it. You really should. They talk about, like, the amount of debt that they're paying off this year, where their money's going, like, which investments they're put into, dividends, how much you can expect to get, like, if you're a stock shareholder. I thought it was stinking interesting. But the things to walk away from, expansion. It's confirmed. It's not an update. The last time they talked about the fall it was said to be a large update no nope, it's an expansion coming this fall they're well aware of the content drought that's happened in year two and they're working closely with Bungie. now whether that is throwing more money at them to hire additional folks or letting them you know commission other studios to craft more content they're aware that year two did not play out as successfully as they wanted so they're working on fixing that that's the big takeaway points and why we just spent like 15 minutes talking about it. Closing thoughts, Diddy. I'm excited for the future. Activision obviously wants Destiny to succeed better. You know, they realize their shortcomings in the since the Taken King launched. Activision wants Bungie. They want to they're pushing Bungie to make it better, improve Destiny more. And once we hear the this the E3 when we get that expansion launch or um, reveal, I think that's when we're going to start to see 
all of the improvements that Activision is able to pressure on Bungie. The game has come a long way since vanilla. I had a pretty lengthy conversation with Sassy, one of the Pineapple Boys, this week. The potential for Destiny is off the scale, and Bungie does have the secret sauce for making console shooters feel better than everything. Like it, Bungie's console shooters always just feel so good. If they can realize that potential and capitalize on it, the next eight years or seven years just are going to be fantastic. I do think we are in a state with Destiny where we're going to look back on this in six and seven years and go, dude, this thing is huge. This has blown up to such a ridiculous level. I don't want to draw too much comparison to World of Warcraft because that really was a global phenomenon. Like it was worldwide industry changing. But I think Destiny is following a similar vein. Maybe not the same level of impact, but I do believe as time goes on, this thing is just going to grow and improve and become something that truly does change FPS forever. I think it already has to a degree. Destiny is so unique in the shooter arena. It's amazing how it works. Where can people find your content? Twitter.com slash Diddy DTS, D-I-T-T-Y DTS, and Discord.me, M-E, slash Destiny the Show. Yeah, I want to take a second and invite any of the listeners to join our Discord. Over 300 members, we're talking about Destiny in there, or just random stuff, Game of Thrones, Overwatch, you name it. It's no spoilers, by the way. <laughs> but we're talking about a ton of stuff in there. And help grow the community. If you're a respectful person who's looking to play with others who enjoy Destiny, go for it. We're trying to make it as big as we can. It's been a really cool tool. I've gotten to play PvP the last two weeks with full parties of 5 and 6. And meet a lot of you awesome people who are passionate and have great ideas and things to say about Destiny and about your feelings towards it. You can follow me at BBK Dragoon on Twitter, same name on YouTube. Make sure to go to our website for all the links from today and more, destinytheshow.com. Check out our friends over at destinytracker.com, the best place uh, no, the best place on the internet to track your stats in the world of Destiny. And that is it. So, thanks for listening. Have an excellent week, Guardians, and we'll see you next time.